I just finished a blog post on how to break free from insecurity in relationships that focused on three primary issues that can result from a root of insecurity. The first one was people pleasing, comparing yourself to other people, and jealousy. In this video, we're going to focus on people pleasing. I'm Jen Brooks from Anchored and Assured, and I'm excited to get into this with you because People pleasing is something I used to struggle with big time. So if it's something that you struggle with as well, you're in good company here. I want us to begin with a self-assessment. I have some, uh, some questions here for you, a little quiz, if you will, to see to what extent do you struggle with this? Maybe mildly, moderate, or severe, or maybe you already know before you hit play, I struggle big time with people pleasing. So let's just see how many of these you can answer yes to. Number one. Do you find yourself saying yes to commitments or favors even when you know it would be in your best interest to say no? For some of us, saying no is really, really hard. Like it's two letter word and it's one syllable, but it just kind of stops right here and we hear ourselves saying yes even though we know we should be saying no. The second question, do you feel a strong urge to have accolades spoken over you by others or words of affirmation, like you're almost driven by it. Like you just really need to hear you did a good job. Like you just intentionally go out of your way to hear an attaboy or to hear how good you've done or your performance or who you are or whatever. You're just driven by those words of affirmation from other people. Next. Do you feel responsible for how other people around you feel? In other words, you may feel that it's your responsibility to make sure everyone's happy. So you're gonna do whatever you can in your realm of possibilities to make sure everyone stays happy, that you, your environment stays peaceful, that you do whatever you can to help other people stay happy. The next one says, do you feel uncomfortable if someone doesn't like you? This one was me really big time. Maybe it may be that if you find out someone doesn't like you, you become like on a mission to prove how lovely you are so that you can get their approval. Or maybe you want to show them, hey, I'm really wonderful. I don't know why you wouldn't like me. So I'm just going to go out of my way to prove how great I am. Have you ever been there? I mean, I have. Do you apologize excessively, even if you've done nothing wrong? You just kind of walk around saying, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, it is just little things that you really have nothing to apologize for, yet you hear the words, I'm sorry, flowing out of your lips all the time. Do you tend to agree with things other people say, even if you disagree sincerely? Maybe there's a conversation going on in a group of people and you really have the opposing viewpoint, but you keep that silence or maybe you even go as far to, to say you're agreeing with them when you're not. The next question, do you avoid conflict at all costs? Like if there's a conflict, you're looking for the closest exit route ASAP. So how'd you do with those questions? Mild, moderate, or severe? Like I said, at one point I was severe and God's word is what helped me break free from that. Not that I'm not tempted to go back to that at times, but I am in a place of freedom from a strong hold to people pleasing by God's grace. So let's look at what the Bible says about people pleasing. The first person that comes to my mind when I think on this topic is the Apostle Paul. Remember, before he came to know Jesus, he was a Pharisee. And we're told in John 12, 43, this about Pharisees, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. More than. See, that's the problem. When the praise of men is held in regard higher than the praise or the approval of God, that's when we have a big time problem. Because whose praise or affirmation we're seeking will become our chief motivating factor behind why we do what we do, the way we make our decisions, how we spend our time, how we spend our finances, the people that we're closest to, 
the people we're ministering to, the list could go on. When our chief motivating factor becomes the praise of people, we're going to be tossed around like a wave in the ocean because we're never, number one, the people's expectations around us are going to waffle. They're going to change. And you can only keep them happy when you are keeping up with their expectations and what they want, their desires and their demands from you. Okay, now who are we serving here? I mean, we need to really take a step back if we find ourselves in this mindset and think, who am I serving? Because if we are aligning our decisions, our time, our energy, what we're doing and why we're doing it with what people want from us, then we're serving people even more than our God. Now, do you remember what the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 1 verse 10? He said, if I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Jesus Christ. See, there it is. Because ultimately, who we're serving is whose approval are we chasing after? Who are we listening to? We need to tune into what our God wants from us because quite honestly, what God asks of us will oftentimes be in direct opposition of what men want us to do, how they want us to behave, how they want us to invest our time, our energy, our resources. Again, the list could go on. If we run around trying to chase after the approval of men, we're going to find ourselves in some really sticky situations and we're not going to be able to serve our God in the way that he's calling us to. We need to be freed up from what people think in order to free us up to serve and worship our God alone. So if you struggle with pleasing people, I would encourage you, you can go back to that blog post that I told you about and go through these questions and say, Lord, I see some of these as being big time issues in my life and I want to break free from them. How do I do that? Show me practical ways where I am going to seek after you, what you want from me and not men. That's going to cause a lot of ruffled feathers with some of your relationships, especially if you have been serving them and you have been seeking after their approval. When you change that up, expect resistance from people. But then we can expect our God to be so pleased in that, to be pleased in our obedience to him and to putting him first. That's the place where he belongs to seek after his approval to do what he's calling us to do in an act of worship. God's word says you shall serve no other gods but me. Worship no other God before me. And seeking his approval first, seeking what he desires for us, it's an act of worship. It's an honor to serve you. Check out that blog post, guys. Thanks for joining me today.